hey, do you want to build a complete, independent, isolated, self-contained computer on top of your existing computer? Or maybe an entire set of computers, a complete virtual infrastructure, or maybe a computer on a computer on top of your computer. Whoa. Now, if you're running a Windows 10 or Windows 11 operating system, it's entirely possible you have the capability built in right now on your home machine. I'm talking about something called Windows Client Hyper-V, and it'll let you build as many virtual machines as your computer and your mind can handle. Let's see if we can get this going. Windows Hyper-V can run as a server, it can run as a role on a server, or with the right operating system and hardware configuration, it can run on your home computer. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the prerequisites as well as the installation of the Windows feature we call Client Hyper-V. When we're done, you should be able to run virtual machines on your home computer. Now, if you're curious at all about how hypervisors work, the difference between a type one and a type two hypervisor, or some of the concepts and technology that's running underneath the hood, I've put some links in the description below to the official Microsoft documentation. That should hopefully get you started on answers to a lot of your questions. In this video though, I wanna focus on getting Client Hyper-V installed as a feature on my Windows 10 or Windows 11 operating system. Client Hyper-V has two key prerequisites in order to make this work. The first is an operating system requirement. The second is a hardware requirement. Let's take a look at both. Now, the first thing we need to verify is your operating system. Client Hyper-V will work on one of three Windows 10 or Windows 11 operating systems, Windows Professional, Windows Education, or Windows Enterprise. Now, the way we're gonna check is we're going to simply right click on our start menu and we're gonna click the system tab. That'll bring us some high level system information, including the Windows specifications. And you can see I'm running Windows 10 Education, which is one of those three. Again, it's gotta be Windows Pro, Windows Education, or Windows Enterprise. If you're running Windows Home, unfortunately, it is not a feature that's available on that operating system. Now, that's not the end of the world. There are some alternatives, and I'll try to create a video for you in the future that talks about some of those options for you if you're running Windows Home. But now that I've clarified that my operating system supports Hyper-V, I need to verify that my hardware supports Hyper-V. Hyper-V is a CPU-based technology, which means we have to have a virtualization-capable CPU. Now, to find that out, you can either look up the specifications of the CPU that you're running on your computer, or you can have Windows tell you. Let me show you. I'll close this up and we're gonna go back to the system information screen. Only this time we wanna see more detail. What I'm gonna do is regular click on that start menu and I'm gonna start typing the word system. You'll see the system information application show up. You can also do this via the command line by just opening a PowerShell or the CLI and just typing in system info. It'll all be presented on the command line for you. Now, again, I can verify my operating system right there, but further down, Windows is evaluating my CPU capabilities in the form of these uh, entries right down at the bottom. Now, let me move my column over a bit. You can see that. What I'm looking to see is that I have a yes in all these categories. I want Hyper-V to be capable of being supported by the CPU. Specifically, I'm looking for virtualization as well as something we call SLAT, second level address translation. Now, the virtualization sometimes, although it's capable, sometimes is disabled in your CPU. If that's the case, you would see a no right here saying that although we're capable, it is not enabled. Now, if that's the case, you're gonna actually manually have to update that through the BIOS setting. You'll have to reboot your computer through Windows Advanced Restart or interrupt the, the boot process and get to that BIOS and enable that virtualization option in your BIOS. Okay, now that I've confirmed my computer is both capable from an operating system point of view as well as a hardware point of view, I just need to turn on this feature in Windows. Start menu again, I'm gonna type the word features and you're gonna see I have an option through the control panel to turn on or off Windows features. And there it is right there, there's Hyper-V just waiting for me. It is currently unchecked. I'm gonna select the checkbox which will include all the management tools that are required to run this and I'm gonna hit okay. What's gonna happen is it's going to pull the files, it's going to apply the settings and it's gonna force me to restart my computer. There we go, applying the changes and ready for a reboot.
And we're back. Hyper-V should now be included as a feature on my Windows operating system. Let's verify. I'm going to click on the Start menu, and I'm going to start typing the letters Hyper, H-Y-P, and there's my application. Hyper-V Manager right there. And I am now presented with the dashboard that will let me control my virtual machines and my virtual infrastructure right from the comfort of my own office. Now, hopefully you're in the same place as me and ready to rock some virtual machines. In videos to come, I'm going to be building all sorts of different virtual machines and infrastructures to practice our skills with server management. Hopefully you're good to go too. I'll see you in the next video.